are rolling. All right, perfect. I'm here right now with David Carroll, the founder of Dope Marketing. We flew all the way to the Twin Cities in Minneapolis. This guy built a multi-million dollar service business, window cleaning, pressure washing, soft washing, automated, complete absentee owner to go build another business, his dream business, which is Dope Marketing. Uh, I'll put on an entire interview we just did in the link in the description below. But bro, you're a marketing expert, you're a genius, and you love what you do. When I say that- You I made say, me blush a lot, Keith, I mean like, yeah, I message this guy stuff like, <laughs> I watch your your content because you're so in love with what you do. Yeah. So I want to interview you here for a few minutes and go, go man. What's that? What were you saying? Well, I just, you always give me so many compliments about like, you hit me the other day. You're like, dude, that voice memo you sent me about like my smile and where I go is just like. Because you're, you're, you're happy. But bro, I'm happy for like, like every day I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life because like I, I. I've taken the things that I've learned the past couple of years and I've built the life that no matter what happens during the day, like I'm happy, I'm in the moment. And like for so many years, it was the grind and the hustle and the stuff and the risk and the all of it that just like, the thing, like dopamine's cheap, dude. And we can get our hits anywhere. And when I go to like, yeah. truly when I get one of my friends that I've known for, Keith, how long? Eight years, 10 years? Like when you hit me and you're like, dude, I'm watching you on video and you're smiling, dude. Like it brings a tear to my eye because I'm like it. I feel it too. Yeah, because yeah. so a lot of people are running their businesses and they're going through a self-imposed hell. And they're <laughs> Amen. Pit, and they're so addicted to the stories and the struggles. Yeah. That years will go by and they they're not they won't. They're like, I can't do this, not one more year. Like, you can do it for, they'll do it for another five years. The moment, yeah. So, you said, you know, back in the day, I'd known you since 2016. We met at the huge convention, and mm -hmm. you said something interesting to me. You said, Keith, remember when all those people were talking about automate your business and all this stuff? You're like, I actually went out and did the shit. So, can you talk a little bit about your journey and how you said how you put your family first? And how do you, I know you can't say this in a few minutes, but the automation, and growing and systematizing a service business to be able to be sure. at and Well, Keith, this. it's like we were talking about a little bit earlier here. It's like to have real control, you have to give up control. And I tell myself that every day. These little hippie beads that I wear with my kid's name on them, it goes to, I will not let my anger affect my vision. I will not let my impatience affect my vision. I will not let any other extenuating circumstance affect my vision. And I have to go there. These tools that I've picked up or what I've learned is like, when I got into the home service space, it was out of necessity. It was a low barrier of entry. I wasn't a very good employee. I wanted to do this shit on my own because I thought I could figure it out. And like, we did and we didn't. I mean, I knew very quickly into my home service business that I just wasn't that good at that. The, the dedication, the attention that it takes to like walk into a business every day where there are unsolvable problems. Something went on the job site yesterday. This guy doesn't want to show up to work. This thing won't happen. Like. I just knew how reactive I was and being in a seasonal place like the Twin Cities, we could only work eight months out of the year anyways. And so I just knew that like my service company was me cutting my teeth, understanding what I was really put on this earth to do. And I just like, I'm still figuring that out. But I think for me in the automation or the setup, I just had a vision. I knew that it was not impossible for a home service business owner to be removed from that business. I saw people doing it, making 80 to 120 grand a year as a salary, building a business up to a point where like they gave up control of all the things that had to happen and they could just take a check, even in a seasonal business. I was watching these people buying franchises for 50, $100,000 and within two years, it's Tom and Julie, the absentee owner, running a, they could be doing anything and they're making real money. Their kids go to a college, they're not in the business every day. And that's a decision we have to make. And so a decision I made after investing a lot of years in the home service space was like, this just isn't that hard. Like it, the, the things that we put on our back and the realizations, it's like, dude, when you just understand like how much do you have to make off a truck going in the field every day and how many days can you get that truck to go in the field and just be responsible around the fucking numbers that they have to bring in this much. And like, if they don't, we have to make it up somewhere because we only have so much time in the year to do it, that's it. I can clean as many gutters as I can within six and a half weeks in October. You know what I can't do? Make another week of gutter cleaning season. I can't do it. It's not in my control. But when I understood that like, I, I spring is gonna be busy for every home service company. Summer, when the kids got out of school, you start going on vacations, the ballers, the people that like your business can kind of always depend on, that'll always spend money on their own, they leave. 
So now, like, did you balance that enough? Commercial work or new home buyers or real estate agents, this stuff you have to do in the summer. Then once you realize like that hump in the summer, it's gonna go spring, 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 spring. I don't need to market, I'm too busy, I have work coming in. But we all know within like two or three weeks, all that shit can change. You can have no work on the calendar within two to three weeks if you don't keep priming the pump. A wise man told me when I first started my company, he's like, Dave, never take your eye off the ball. His name's Chris Lambertini. He said, you have to always be priming the pump. Even when you're busy, you have to be advertising. What's advertising? What's the difference between advertising and marketing? It doesn't mean I have to be spending money all the time. But I have to be taking actions that get my business in front of people because there's three million people in the Twin Cities. They all need their windows clean, but are they all my perfect customer? Probably not. So if I understand the positioning of my time, of my business, spring's gonna be busy, summer's gonna get slower, but then what happens at the end of August every year? When we think we're dying, when our wife is gonna leave us, when we can't pay our bills, when we can't put gas in our truck, like, oh, what happens in September? Oh God, the world just changed somehow and it's all better now. No, dude, you were just making one week decisions, not one month or one quarter or one year decisions. So like when I took the responsibility to go into my business and actually treat it like a business, it wasn't at some emotional roller coaster of how I was feeling this week of where I was going to spend money or where I was going to spend my time or where I was going to put effort. It just became predictable enough that I could step away from it knowing that I put the work in for the same thing to happen if I wasn't there. Mm. So as you say this, I see things in like NLP, like a, it's like a feeling, a vision. Imagine you're in this bubble, like in a, like a fishbowl, right? Yeah. And you can't get out. You're in this. It's you, like you can't divorce yourself from the cast. Now imagine, you ever see like a, imagine a soap bubble and pop and it becomes two. So it's like a different reality, almost like the labyrinth. You go, and then your business is no longer this thing you're trapped in. It's this thing that's outside of you. Can I jet, Did jet any of us create this business to be trapped in it? Like, was that our goal from all of it? Anyone ever that started a business in the history of starting fucking businesses, did anyone go, I'm gonna do this so it's painful and it traps me and I'm stressed out and it sucks? No, the opposite. Yeah, but then like the result is we're not holding ourselves accountable for what we really wanted. Ooh. What did you really want? Do you wake up every morning and remind yourself of that? And again, I'll get as hippie woo woo as you guys want to, but like, what promise did you make yourself this morning? Today's gonna be a good day. I'm gonna go get some shit done. There are plenty of people in the world that I'm healthy enough to go help that wanna give you their money to solve a problem they have. I have to accept I'm not their number one priority. No one that hired me today said, that is the one thing on the top of my list of all the places I can spend all my minutes during the day that I'm gonna have, Ke I'm gonna hire Keith to do. No, dude, it's like the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then you don't get the attention. You know, why do you think it takes like, what is it, seven to 20 times to follow up with someone to get them to do something? Because we're not their priority. So like when you, when you hold yourself accountable that, I have to spend the time required to get to where I wanna go. Am I where I wanna go? Who is? But can we be okay with the journey? Like with where we're at, with the process. When I wake up this morning and Jimmy didn't show up for work and Karen called the property manager because someone's cat looked at him wrong and then you ran over a thing and this broke and all. I promise you one thing, you cannot control any of that and it's going to keep happening every day. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing to prepare yourself when these things come at you and say, oh my God, I'm trapped. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> like, what do you mean, dude? The shit you signed up for? Have you given up enough control to not have that affect you so much? If a ladder fell off your truck right now at a job site, what can you do? Oh. Is there anything you can do tomorrow? To make it not happen? Well, you can put precautionary measures and training. Okay. Right? And everything okay. make people. So let's just assume it's a girl. No, no one got hurt. Nothing happened. But like something got left at a job site or fell over and broke. Can you control that that happened in that moment? No. Did the person who did it that wasn't you, was that their intention when they showed up today? To fuck something up? No. Did the lady who left her house this morning in a Kia minivan with five kids with the cat stickers on the back that's driving 55 miles an hour on the way to work in your way, did she leave her house to piss off Keith? No. So what, how are you trapped or what are you so frustrated about? Like if you really go to the things and how much you let these things affect you during the day. Think of your temperament. Think of the conversation you had with the employee that left the thing unlocked and a crackhead stole your catalytic converter last night. Think about that. Was it Jimmy's goal to do that? <laughs> no. But now think of every interaction you have throughout the day that was stemmed off that frustration. 
How is everyone's uh, so day? You become hyper responsible and accountable for the ener energy you bring into an environment for yourself, the way you chose, so you hold yourself accountable to what you said. Like it's like you didn't choose to be trapped. You didn't choose to be mad. You didn't go get your tax ID to be pissed off all day. What do you enjoy doing? Where's the reminder of like when you're involved in this thing that's moving fast? It's stressful. It's fun. It's happy. Like, where are you counting your wins? We know we're gonna learn from our losses. Those things sting. Like. You, you ask the gambler, like, what's the most money you ever won? Like, I don't know. What's a loss? You, man, I busted out on this thing or whatever. It's like, everyone's going to hold themselves accountable, probably to a fault of like the things that went wrong and how painful they are and the baggage and remember, I got screwed, Keith, you don't understand. Uh, yeah. I'm hanging on to it. Dude, you told me something that actually got me over the fear back in the day of uh, hiring employees and being able to leave a job site. What was you, it? you told me when you hire somebody, of course you train them, but you have to let them trip on themselves and, and let them, like you can't be in there, you know, putting. It, have, has know, anyone ever, has anyone hired like a sales or a marketing or an office person? And it's like, they're a week, couple days, a week into the job. And then you finally let them take their first call and you're over their shoulder like, shh, shh, say this, say this. And they're like, shut the fuck up, Keith. I can't think while you're talking to me. We've all done it. It's the giving up of control. Control. It's like the worst thing you can ever have because there's never enough of it until you realize it doesn't exist. Because when you give up control, you're just allowing something to go wrong. That's it. If I'm controlling something like, no, dude, don't worry, bro. I, like, I got my hands on it. I, I'm, I'm on it. I have. What if you lived in a world where you could just trust your decision making enough to where like if something went wrong, you weren't hard on yourself? Because you like, if did you do your best? Did you lead up to that moment and plan as much as? It, what do they say? Like, uh, um, anxieties in the future and depressions in the past, mm. and that's why the present is so beautiful. Mm. So it's like all that worrying, all that anxiety, all that thinking about what yeah. happened last time. Dude, I got a, I got some right now for me. My, I think my my biggest weakness is uh, sitting on decisions, taking too long to make decisions with a paranoia around it. So, how do you make Why are you stressing yourself out so much? You can't get, dude, as much as we all wanna think life is chess, it's checkers. You can only plan so much. Like, if you wanna sit around and stress yourself out about, and dude, like I have been as guilty of this as anyone. If you wanna sit and stress out about every possible outcome and convince yourself that you're like, I'm planning, no, I'm just making sure that if any of this happens, I've stressed myself out enough that I might have the reaction. You worked, your, you, you worked yourself up so fucking much you wouldn't even remember the shit that you were anxious about. <laughs> and so like, to go through this level of planning, what if you just woke up and took your time to know when something happened, you actually had a plan that you could be like, oh, that was the outcome I was going for, or oh, it didn't go this way, but I'm not like, chugging Red Bull, yelling, screaming, thinking so fast that I can't even remember what I was doing before. That like tornado of chaos that we get so comfortable mm. in. I think it's so much more important to look at like, dude, we all know that feeling. I talk to my kids about it. That ginger ale, you know, you're being a fucking weirdo. You're getting all squirrely. You're like, everyone sees it. We see it. We know it in ourselves. That feeling that you get when you're like, oh man, what is fucking bugging me? Like when you really recognize and hold yourself accountable for that action, when you start to get that feeling, that's when you don't have control. And I don't mean control of like a situation. I mean like mm. the outcome that is, that is, you're that you're thinking. You're like neurotic because you're not. I got I got to Okay. So if he says this, I'm going to do this. Or if this happens here, I'm going to do this. Or if they do what we, like there's so many different relationships, sales processes, um, follow up stuff. Like if this person does this, think of, think of a problem you had with an employee that you had to hold them accountable. All right, mm. if Keith does this, I'm gonna say this, but I have to approach it this way, and maybe if I said it like this, it's like, all that's good. I'm not gonna say it's time wasted completely. But if you truly think about like, what if I was just operating in a way every day that regardless of the outcome of the situation, like I knew it was gonna be okay. And it's such like, oh yeah, sounds easy, dude. You're here, you're, but it's like, no, dude. What did you, re think about the sleepless nights or the early morning? when you were sitting up having a fucking conniption about something. Well, how did you get yourself to slab down a million bucks on a printer machine? Someone else did it before. They're alive still. To zero, what's a problem? A problem is a zero. You wanna scale? You really wanna like get in a room full of like people with hundreds of millions and billions of dollars? It's the same issue, add a zero. It's a number. And I don't mean to downplay that, but what I mean is like, 
dude, what you're doing isn't that special. You're not as pretty of a snowflake as your third grade teacher told you. It's unique. Yes, your problems are unique to you. Doesn't mean someone down the block's not going through the same shit. Now, like, just how hard are you on yourself? How hard do you want all this to be? Like, dude, really, like, hold yourself accountable if you're watching or listening to this. Think of the last, like, three times that you worried yourself to a point that no one could really talk you out of it. Like, you're just like, oh, shit, I got to figure this out. How are we going to make payroll? How are we going to do this thing? We have to figure this out. We're going to, like, remember that feeling? Oh, yeah. Well, how, do you feel, yeah. how do you feel right now today? It's like, it was, not, it was nothing. Was that worth it? I exacerbated the whole bullshit in my head. So how did I get to a point of where I could, like, literally take a step back and make the commitment that I'm not going to feel like that anymore? Because, dude, like, I'll just say, like, I have probably put, a, like, finances, stress, all that stuff to the point of like, of the point of the point, like, like, yeah. like pushed it. Where I go with it is like, all I learned about those emotions or feelings is like, I'm only in control of them. How worried do I really want to be? How stressed out do I really want to be? How much control do I really need to have out of something that I can't really decide? I can, I, I can decide like what I feel about the outcome, but dude, like I'm doing my best. It's going to go the way it's going to go. And again, very blanket relative statement, but everyone's not good. It's just like, stop being so fucking hard on yourself. You know, that's one thing I want to actually wrap this up now because you covered so much is I see on your, your Instagram and I've followed your journey. You've really dove in, uh, into, into personal health and uh, very important. It's uh, a lot of cardio, a lot of exercise, like really committed. And I've watched you. Uh, how can I explain? Not only has your physique and you, you've slimmed down and your posture straight, you're just fucking amped, bro. And what was, what was the thing that made you wake up to that? So you are like, boom, that's it. I decided to stop drinking. Yeah, we were drinking almost like three years. Like not a sip. And it was just, I looked at anyone that's like, I mean, I'm sure there's stuff on the internet about it. It wasn't that long ago. It was only three years. Like I was like the wild man, dude, your wife didn't want you hanging around without a town. Just like that was my MO. And I looked at what was really important to me, which was my family. And I was like, if I'm not going to lead from the front, if I'm not going to be an example, there's no more. And look, I want everyone to smoke weed out of their gun with their husband and vote fucking purple. I just don't care. Like be happy. Life's hard enough to be happy. When I looked at the life I was living and the things I was chasing, um, if anyone's seen True Detectives season one, Woody Harrelson talks about it. You know, He was chasing something his whole life and he didn't realize until he got older it was right in front of him. And I, you know, I'm so blessed that outside of the, the business, the stuff, the whatever, dude, there were times in my life where I thought about like having a beautiful family driving my Mercedes with my Rolex on to my house and like I made a decision that that's gonna be my life now and I'm thankful for that every day. There's no more grind, there's no more chase. There's no, and take the, the car and the money, none of that shit matters. But I remember there was a time when I thought like, what if I just had that? And then like most things in life you get it and you're like, how much did that really matter? What really matters was right in front of me the whole time, which was my family and that's my, it's just so easy. Why do I make the decisions I make every day? Because there are people that depend on me every day, that look up to me, outside of my businesses and my employees and my stuff, like, you talk about control, the one true thing I'm in control of is how these little humans that I put on this earth look at the world, and I just, like, take that really seriously. Wow. Dave Carroll, Dope Marketing. That's why we came to the Twin Cities here. Bro, how can everybody find you? And you have a podcast too, because this is this is gonna be on my podcast, the Untrapped Podcast. We do. What's your podcast, dude? Uh, Dope Conversations with Dave Carroll and Friends. Season two is dropping actually beginning of next month. Where can everybody find it? Uh, type dope marketing into a social media platform or a search engine and you will find us. Perfect. And Dope Conversations, the podcast. Dope Conversations, the podcast. We'll also Google, YouTube, Spotify, all the fun places. Bro, such an honor. Appreciate you, Keith. All right, see you next time.